So recently I was reading Viktor Frankl's Man in Search of Meaning, and he talks about something called the existential vacuum. People who are lacking a purpose in their life, who are lacking a drive, who don't really understand the meaning of life. They don't recognize and acknowledge the freedom and the responsibility, the responsibility for themselves, the responsibility for making something or someone out of himself. The meaning of life, according to Viktor Frankl, is searching for meaning in your own life. So people who are not doing that kind of thing, they have this big void, this wide gap that's readily filled with a ready-made ideology, with propaganda, with nudges, with social pressure. And he talks about how people with this existential vacuum can either become conformist, so they do what other people are doing, or they become totalitarian, meaning that they do what other people tell them to do. And of course, there's a crossover between those two things, and we've seen that play out. A totalitarian system, part of its meaning is that the masses are compliant with the system. They even ask for things. They go beyond obedience. They desire to be part of the ideological landscape. They cheerlead, they basically build their identities around whatever the ideology is and whatever the goals of the ideology are. So if those goals are fighting climate change or eliminating a virus, if the goals are getting rid of a certain ethnic group, if the goals are creating a better society, the masses, they subscribe to that and they help it play out. We're all going to have to rethink the way we live our lives and the way we dispose of all the things we buy and the way society works. And it's much better if we think about it together and without enmity. But understanding a common purpose for the common good, is that so much to ask? We're all in this together. We'll fight together and we will win together. We're going to win this. Fauci, Walensky, Trudeau, Trump, all of these people who were at the top barking orders down are accountable for what they did, but they are not the ones who allowed it to continue. What actually allowed their words to have any weight were that the people, largely lacking meaning, waiting for that something to fill in the void, did what they were told and followed and conformed. They basically allowed that totalitarian system to flourish. If you made a decision that you knew was wrong because you thought that you had to do it, because somebody was telling you to do it, that's enabling the system. If you did the same thing and you thought it was right and you thought that this was the best thing that you could do for society, for your grandma, for whoever, then that also enabled it. The total sum of those things enabled this whole mechanism. So now people are pointing out a kind of boogeyman that they want to take down. And yeah, these are bad people and they did horrible things and they should be held accountable for that. But are they the reason that this all played out this way? You know, if a certain fellow with a mustache was rambling off in a bar in a dark corner in Germany in the 1930s, nobody would have paid attention to him unless that was in the air, unless that was what the people wanted. Somebody to come in with this grand collectivist ideology to lead the way because the masses had this existential vacuum that they were waiting to be filled. So what's the antidote? Viktor Frankl would say leading a life of purpose. Carl Jung would say the same thing, self-discovery. These are the hedges that we have against totalitarian systems. And in the end, it doesn't really matter if it does repeat itself, if this is a cycle, if we're bound to go through it anyways. As I said in my last video, if we can't change that, we can't change it, but we can change our own lives. We can have psychological freedom. We can make our own choices. We always have a choice. Viktor Frankl wrote his book after being in concentration camps under the most horrific circumstances. And from that, he realized that 
man makes a decision no matter what his external circumstances are, even the worst, even when he is treated as a non-human. The choice is there in every single moment, in every single thing that we do, and that is freedom. That is psychological freedom. That is spiritual freedom. Dr. Frankel, what is the difference between people who are able to pick themselves up, get over life's problems, and those who are not? The decisive factor is decision, the freedom to, of choice, the freedom to come up with a decision. It should be, I would like to become this way or another in spite of conditions that should only seem to fully determine my behavior. I wish to act freely as a responsible being, which is a human being. This is what I really do think is the path forward. There could be a critical mass of people who were psychologically free for the most part, you know, who did this kind of work, who lived by their values, who did not live by lies, and that would trickle out into culture. And then maybe the people around them would get inspired to have a little bit more of a spine and to have a little bit more purpose in their lives. You know, we don't learn from people telling us what it is. We learn from trying to figure out what it is for ourselves. And when you do that kind of thing, sometimes people around you see, see you doing that kind of thing and they're like, hey, that's cool. Maybe I'll try that too. Seems to be working out for them. But regardless, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the outcomes are. I don't want to give you some utilitarian argument for freedom. A great friend of mine, Bruce Party, he always says, you know, freedom is the end itself. Freedom is not the means to anything. It's not for anything. Freedom is the point. And I think that that's where I'm going to leave you guys with today. <laughs>